All right, so in this video, we're going to show you how to use the Factory Talk Alogix Echo dashboard. Now, I'm going to show you this in a very simple way. Again, uh, this is version one, so the software is newly developed, and again, it will get better as the time goes forth. So, what I've done is I've actually changed my processor. I've changed my PLC processor, and I'll explain why I've done that in just a minute. So, we've you've seen I've done the batching station project before. Um, I've changed my processor from an L73 to an L85. Now, I don't actually have an L85 processor, right? So I've only done this for this simple process of using the Echo software. Okay, so how do we use this Echo software? I'm glad you asked. So here we go. We've got to open it up, Factory Talk Logix Echo Dashboard. So when you go to the, the dashboard, I want you to understand a couple different things about this, right? There's going to be empty when you first get it. Um, again, when you do... Um, this is a purchasable software. You have to have a license for it again, but it is something that you can purchase from Rockwell off their e-commerce site again. So it is a very uh, productive thing if you're the benefits to it. So let me let me describe the benefits to it versus emulation. So the, the cool thing about Factory Talk uh, Logix Echo is you can take your project in whole the way it is, meaning the way it's going to run in the field, the way you designed it to run in the field permanently, right? And you can echo that all in an emulated environment without using an emulated processor. So what does that mean for us? All right, that means we don't have to actually change our processor right here. You don't have to change our processor to a emulated processor like we have been, have done in the past. The drawbacks to this is it's only, only gonna be an L8 processor or above. So when we come up here and we go to devices, we can add a controller. Okay, so when we add a controller, it's going to show you that it only does a Control Logix 55580 emulator. Okay, and the current versions again that are basically what you have installed on your computer um, are going to be 31, 33 and above, right? So think about this is going to be L8 processors and above. If you're using anything less than L8, you're going to use the standard process of what we used to use as far as emulation. I have tons of videos showing you how to do emulator, showing you how to use that. This is moving forward using Project Echo where you don't have to change a single thing. So this being said, you have two drop downs up here. You can add a controller or you can add from an ACD file, which is a very cool process. Let me show you this. So if we're going to add from an ACD file. I'm going to select my project. Okay, I already had it pre-pointed to the destination that it was already looking for. Okay, save us some time. Now we're going to open that up. The cool thing about adding from an ACD file is it pulls in the project name. Okay, it already knows it's going to be with a controller. It already knows the version it's running. And again, this is what slot you are in. You can change your slot number right here if you're in a different slot. This does use Factory Talk links as the communication path. This is, so it doesn't use RS logic or RS links anymore, right? As far as the communication path. So if you're using Project Echo, which is Factory Talk Echo, and you're trying to mimic your actual your project, you're going to use Factory Talk links. We'll show you this. And again, so we can change our IP address up here on which one you want to use for your communications path, right? So in our case, um, you have a loopback, a natural loopback inside of the OS. Um, the operating software, which is Windows, right? With the loopback is naturally 127.0.0.1. That's a natural loopback, okay? So that's always there. You can use that. Let me show you this. So we're not going to change it to our, our default, you know, what we currently been using, which is basically the 192.168.1. We're going to change it. We're just going to leave it like it is, slot zero. So let's add our project. We're going to double click our project and see that it's quickly added, okay? Now we can come in here and anytime change our processor, we can change or change the IP address, change anything we want to, right? Use an SD card. Um, what's the controller instance online, offline, okay? Now you can come over here to device status. Device status, you can see right here, you can click on it and you can change from remote run to run to program. That's where you would change that. All right, so now we, we know how to add it, our project to Project Echo. That's how easy it is. Okay, so what do we do, right? So if we're coming in here, and I'm gonna show you this, and we're looking for the uh, factory talk links, right? So we, we talked about factory talk links. 
So here's the software, right? So we're gonna to go to factory talk. We're not gonna to go to RS links. We're going to go to factory talk links, okay? So factory talk links now, if I open up factory talk links, again, very, very similar and can be used in, in, in basically as a substitute for uh, RS links, but it does have a little bit of drawbacks. It doesn't have the older drivers and stuff like that if you're, if you're, you're currently using older drivers. But if you're using this Project Echo, this is what you use. And you can see right here, I'm currently live. This is my project that I have in here. So my project, theoretically, that I have open right now, I can go ahead and get online. But if I go Who Active, I'm currently using the um, Who Active. I'm currently using the software of RS Links Classic. So I can't go online with it. So how would I do that? I would go File. I would close. I'll come over here to Communications. Then I would go to select communication software, change that to factory talk links, hit OK. Then I'm going to come over here and open that back up, right? So I'm going to open up my file. So you can select your file or you can open it just like you did. And let's just go back and close this out because it's easier. I already have it pulled up. Uh, let's do the files and let's open up my file. What I'm going to do is actually get this online and show you how it works. So we're opening up our file again after we've changed our communication path for who active. Really simple, real easy to do, but something that's kind of mandatory if you're going to use the Factory Talk um, Echo software, right? And you're, well, the reasons for that is obviously you're, you're going to you're going to actually be able to test your whole software or test everything without changing anything. So we're going to go who active. Now you see who active is pointing to factory talk links, right? So what do we want to do is go to our driver right here. Now we want to download. Now what this is going to do is it's going to download the controller to the using the software. Okay. So it's going to do, do its natural function of downloading. It's going to show all the warnings, all the errors, if anything. It's going to link all the routines then it's going to finalize and when it does it's going to leave it in the state the last state we left this controller in echo okay so in echo we left the controller in remote run right so let's let this finish right so echo is really 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 easy to use you can use multiple projects i believe at this point in time uh, you you can use up to 17 projects i'm not dead set on that number because i know they're going to probably get things better and better and better as time goes on. Uh, they always do with Rockwell software, right? So let's let this thing download. And as soon as it finished downloading, okay, so here we go. I was about to say it was, it was a really, really small program, so it shouldn't take long at all. So it's going to finish downloading. It's linking all my routines right now. You can see the, the current status up here. It's remote, uh, it's remote run program. So it's going to change based upon what you're doing. Um, this is a, a really good side to this because again, you're being able to test it without having to change your processor. That's the, that's the coolest thing. So if you're in the, the way of testing or trying to do like a, a system test, you don't have to change your processor. Your processor is 100% exactly what it's supposed to be in the real, in the field. And you can get everything talking. So now I'm gonna go to remote run, okay? Now in this, this environment, right, I can easily come over here and now I'm in my, and this does talk to everything, right? So it talks to Factory Talk, uh, you know, studio. And so if I open up Factory Talk studio and I try to make sure I have a good connection, I can open up this and let me just do like a test real quick and see if everything works. So currently you can see everything is working, you know, because it did actually show my driver. Now it does show communication peer to peer. So you can see that this is uh, this is the Factory Talk View Studio. This is the HMI project that's talking to this, that was designed, that we designed before to work with the, the uh, patching station project before. But again, this time we're using Project Echo. You can see now if we open up Project Echo, right? And we have our, we, you can see we're right over here. If you go to your little plug status, which is device status, you can open that up click on that you can see it's in remote right so it's actually running so if we want to throw it in program let's throw it in program you can see it swaps up here you see how that is so you, it's a very easy tool to actually use um, let's do remote run 
Okay, so well, it's a very easy tool to use. And again, all of this is functionally working. Okay, so all of this is just working just like it was on emulation. We built it before. Um, I just want to show you a quick and easy way to actually communicate and use Factory Talk Echo because again, it's a brand new tool out. There's not much information out there about it. When it comes down to it, here's how to use it. Here's how to, you know, base, based upon, you know, my experience, what I've seen the benefits of it, what I see the drawbacks of it, um, really kind of what you should do, what you can do. You can do, if you're doing, in the business of doing multiple projects, this is great to keep adding your projects in here and they will all communicate through the backplane right they will all communicate with no problems there's no changes that has to be made i'm going to actually show this on a plant pax 5.0 and get that running on that as well so just to show you how that works now that process is going to take a little bit more time so i wanted to show you on a project that i personally built and show you that everything works now we we did get our process our plc program downloaded without changing to an emulator it was a real processor Again, we don't actually have that processor and we got it talking through our HMI. Really simple, real easy using the Factory Talk Logics Echo. Again, it is a paid software. It's not a free software, just like anything, but it is a very valuable software if you are in the, the you know process of actually uh, testing and, and making sure your system works. You know, you can always go back if you have emulator and use emulator just like you would. Um, again, if you don't have Echo and you don't want and you kind of want to save some money or whatever the case may be, then I would recommend staying with your, you know, your, your emulator. But again, this is a very cool tool because you don't have to change anything. So it makes factory, you know, like testing your systems as they would work in a factory or as they would work in manufacturing, perfectly simple, really easy without changing anything, making it work properly. So hopefully you enjoyed that video and we'll see you guys on the next one.